Each and every one of us has a hustling, bustling, vibrant community inside of us, spanning across large distances, communicating and living alongside one another. The members of this community almost outnumber the cells in our body, and the sheer genetic content of this community outweighs that of all of our cells combined. This community is called the microbiome and is composed of bacteria, archaea, viruses, and fungi. They line the surfaces of our organs, are present on our skin and in our hair, and under normal conditions of health, the microbiome is our ally. A large-scale study conducted by NIH saw multiple body sites to characterize what a normal microbiome would look like. And they found differences between individuals such as you and I, as well as large-scale differences between the body sites of individuals. One common analogy used is that the microbiome between body sites can differ as much as taking a swab from the sub-Saharan desert to that of the Amazon rainforest. And this is just under normal conditions of health. This diverse and dynamic community is disrupted in disease. And this is where my project comes in. I am focusing on characterizing the lung microbiome of non-small cell lung cancer, the largest subgroup of lung cancer. I'm using a unique data set in which I'm able to sequence the microbes present within a tumor as well as its surrounding tissue. I'm also able to sequence multiple regions within a tumor, whereas historically only a single region would have been sampled and drawn conclusions from. This is quite similar to stating that the characteristics of everyone on this Zoom call represents the population of London, for example. What we've been able to find is that no two regions within a single tumor are the exact same in terms of the microbiome, and there's diversity at a centimeter level that has never been seen before. We're also able to take samples from treatment and recurrence to see how the microbiome changes throughout the patient's lifetime. So I guess the main question is, why does an in-depth analysis into the lung microbiome even matter? And to that, I have two key take-home messages. The first is that imagine if we were able to find microbes associated with poor response and progression, we could then easily provide probiotics and antibiotics to alter the lung microbiome and improve outcomes without side effects. As well as this, we've been able to find diversity at a centimeter level that has never been seen before. So maybe there is actually more to the microbiome than we had originally first thought. 